Good morning and welcome to St Mary's here in Beeston for our Easter Day service. It's really good to have you with us. And this morning our church is looking beautiful because the flower arrangers have been in decorating it, the cleaners have been in making it look even better and the uh, brass cleaners and everybody else has really uh, worked hard to make it look good. And outside the church, we have an Easter display. So if you're around in Beeston, do come down and look at that. There's also a little Easter trail that you can follow, particularly for young ones, because you have to crouch down to see what it says. But you're very welcome to come along and see that. So here we are today in church on Easter day to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. And I am joined by some people. I'm not here by myself, which is even better. So I'm just going to turn the camera around to show you who is in church today. Okay, so with me today, I have, I'll turn it all the way around first. So I have, uh, and, and if you'd like to wait, uh, Terry and Jill. Hi. <laughs> I have um, Alison and Audrey and and Sean. Hello. There we go. And uh, we are not sure who it is going to be listening in to this today, but um, do leave your comments and let us know if you're listening in today. And just before we start, I'm going to just show you some of our flowers in church. So you'll be able to see a pedestal. We've not had any flowers in Lent. It's lovely to see flowers in church. Our flower range has been busy. We have our flowers here in church. On the pulpit, there is a lovely display. Can you see those? Aren't they beautiful? They look even better further back from the church where you can see them. And they've got these little tiny eggs in them as well, which are lovely. And because we're actually recording this, on Saturday evening. We have our Paschal candle stand, but it doesn't have the Paschal candle in it yet. Tomorrow morning it will be lit and processed up the church and placed in the stand. And then every time we have a christening, baptism, as we will do tomorrow morning, this morning, then uh, we will light a candle from that light. We also have our Alleluia's. These Alleluia's, which we buried before Lent started because we don't use Alleluia during Lent. But Easter is the time for Alleluia's. So they are displayed here in church and these were prepared by Audrey working with our young ones here in church. So it's lovely to see them and I hope our young ones will love seeing them too. So welcome to our service here this morning. We're going to begin by singing a hymn that we'll be singing in church. Uh, but before that, we have a little response. Hallelujah! Christ is risen! He is risen indeed! Hallelujah! We're going to sing our first hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today. Jesus Christ is risen today.
Our service this morning, some of the words for it, come from the Church of Kenya, the Anglican Church in Kenya, reminding us that we are part of a worldwide communion of people celebrating the resurrection around the world. This is the good news. The grave is empty. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. This is the good news. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never put it out. Hallelujah. This is the good news. Once we were no people, now we are God's people. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and the way to life stands open in our Saviour, Jesus Christ. So we pray. Lord, bring new life where we are worn and tired, new love when we have turned hard-hearted, forgiveness when we feel hurt, and where we have wounded, and the joy and freedom of your Holy Spirit, where we are prisoners of ourselves. Amen. We're now going to have our Bible reading, which Terry is going to read to us, one of the stories of the resurrection. Terry, if you'd like to come forward to read. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women who had accompanied Jesus came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood, stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the th third day rise again. Then they remembered Jesus' words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen clothes by themselves and he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Terry. Do sit down. If all has gone according to plan, by this time tomorrow morning, which will be ten past ten or thereabouts, then uh, some of us will have been up for hours because we will have been like those women in the Gospel Early in the morning, we would have headed down to Holbeck Cemetery where there will be a little service to uh, celebrate the resurrection, bringing together Christians from across our community here in LS11. Hopefully, I'm expecting that will have happened and we will be using the same service as we're using now. And after that, we will then come back to the parish centre for breakfast I'm really sorry you've missed that. Next year, if you're around, don't forget. But there's something very special about picturing ourselves with those women at the beginning, going to the tomb and expecting to find the stone and inside the body of Jesus. 
and there to do what they can to anoint him with spices and herbs to prepare his body for the burial rituals which they weren't able to do on Friday because the Sabbath was beginning. Going early in the morning and discovering that something different and new has happened. That something totally outside their experience or indeed our experience since. And that as they are told by the two men, angels, who appear there, Christ has risen. And there begins the next chapter of the story. When I went into Beeston Primary School, it was actually a couple of weeks before Easter, well, I did it on Zoom, actually, um, then I said to them that Easter is all about new life. I took him with me. Well, I showed them. I was sort of in there on the computer with them. I took a lamb and a chicken. That's a chicken, believe it or not. And I said about how the world around us has lots of signs of new life. We talked about the spring bulbs and everything. And that Easter is about new life. New life that we can have in Jesus. New life, which is about always having that chance to try again, always having that opportunity to have a fresh start that is just so valuable, and having the hope that there will be a time when, as Isaiah says, there will be a new heaven and a new earth, and where all that is wrong with our world will be ended. Easter is the start of that, but it's not the end. It's the beginning of the season. And God calls us to work with him to build that new heaven and new earth. And to each of us, he gives new life. And of course, that's why we have Easter eggs as well, because they're a sign of new life too. So enjoy your Easter eggs if you're having them and give thanks for the new life of Easter. Amen. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for ourselves, for our community here, our city, our country, our world. So in the quiet, let's start with each person. What do you need to pray and ask God for yourself? Would you like the new life he comes to bring? Are there things that you want to have a new start from? Are there things in your life that you know aren't right, that you would like to change? Or this Easter, Ask God to help you start anew. And then are there people that you're worried about? Maybe you're worried yourself about how you will look after your family, your friends. Are there people around you who are ill? In body, mind or spirit? Name them before Jesus. Ask God to be with them, to bring healing, to bring peace, to, be, to bring strength. Pray that we may be people who are part of a community who support each other, who love one another as Jesus told us to. Pray for our city, all of Leeds, all its different communities. Pray for our country.
There's always difficult things in the news, in our country and in our world. So think about the things that you have heard in our news today, yesterday. We're thinking about Ukraine, of course. We're also thinking about Jerusalem, Palestine, and so many other places that we know there are difficulties but we haven't heard them on the news. All these places we place in God's hands. So Lord, take our prayers and answer them as may be best. And where we don't have the words to pray, then may you know our concerns and help us play our part in answering those prayers. Amen. We come now to that point in the service where we share the peace. So I'm going to ask those people here in church to stand. It's up to you at home whether you stand or stay seated or, where, or lying down wherever you are. Christ is our peace the indestructible peace we now share with each other. The peace of the Lord be also with you. And also, and also with you. you. So we share peace with each other. And now we're going to move to the next part of our service, the sharing of the bread and wine. Thank you, Sean. Is the Father with us? He is. Is Christ among us? He is. Is the Spirit here? He is. Now who is our God? And who are we? His faithful people. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to give thanks and praise. praise. It is our right and our delight to give you thanks and praise, great Father, living God, supreme over the world, creator, allocator, saviour and giver. From a wandering nomad, you created your family. For a burdened people, you raised up a leader. For a confused nation, you chose a king. For a rebellious crowd, you sent your prophets. In these last days, you sent us your son, your perfect image, bringing your kingdom, revealing your will, dying rising, reigning, remaking your people for yourself. Through him you have sent upon us your life-giving spirit, filling us with energy and light. Therefore, with angels and archangels and Christian ancestors in heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Owner of all things, we thank you for giving up your only Son for us, who owe you everything. 
Pour your refreshing spirit on us as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. On the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. His body was broken for us. In the same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. We are are brothers and sisters through his blood. blood. We We have died died together. together. We We will will rise together. together. We We will will live together. together. Therefore, Heavenly Father, hear us as we celebrate this covenant with joy and await the coming of our brother. He died in our place, making a full atonement for the sins of the whole world, the perfect sacrifice once and for all. You accepted his offering by raising him from death and granting him great honour at your right hand on high. Amen. Amen. Jesus Jesus is Lord. Lord. This is the feast of victory. The The Lamb who was slain slain has begun begun his reign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. (coughs) And so we come to the Lord's Prayer. And I invite you all to use the form of the Lord's Prayer that you are most comfortable with. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Let us pray. 
we say together. Loving God, you have fed us generously at this table as we have remembered Jesus and rejoiced that he is with us today. We are ready now to follow him and to be your people in the world. May your Holy Spirit show us the way. Make us holy and fill us with your love. Amen. Our final blessing. May the God who shakes heaven and earth, whom death could not contain, who lives to disturb and heal us, bless you with the power to go forth and proclaim the gospel. In the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So now, are you ready to sing again? Our second hymn today is a very familiar one. I'm sure you'll know it. It's Lord of the Dance. So I'm just going to go and move the microphone.
smile. 